Well, I would like to start by thanking the Heartland Institute very much for inviting me to come here. Uh, back home in Stockholm, Sweden, we have experienced one of the coldest summers so far, so it's very nice to be over here to feel the summer warmth of Nevada. It's a little bit too hot maybe, but uh, that's what you have to endure when you travel. So let's see, yes. Uh, well, keep your warm coat on. I'm going to talk about some historical ice observations, reasons for changes of the ice extent, and possible future ice conditions in the Arctic Ocean. And uh, hold on, because in 12 minutes I have to be pretty fast. I will start uh, by showing you where Iceland is. And um, looking at historical records, we can go back uh, 1,200 years. Before that, uh, that means before the year 800, Iceland was uh, surrounded by ice continuously. And then suddenly, around 800, the ice disappeared, which uh, the people in Norway discovered, and they traveled over the North Atlantic and settled down in uh, Iceland. And uh, here is a compilation of the ice situation. And uh, you can see that it starts to the left, uh, the year 800. And uh, uh, then at, uh, the uh, people on Iceland, they, uh, it was Eric the Red. He uh, he'd sailed west. Uh, he heard rumors about the land, uh, and he found it was Greenland. And he settled down there with... Uh, his family and other people. It was overpopulated on Iceland. And um, this is the church uh, Eric the Red built for his wife, Chordhilde, in southern Greenland. Uh, Eric the Red had a son named Leif Eriksson, uh, who is uh, claiming to be the first to discover the North America continent. But in the year uh, 1203, the ice came back, and um, the, it is reported uh, in the old sagas that polar bears came ashore on Iceland. And uh, two years ago, uh, ice, polar bears came ashore on Iceland again. They were quickly killed. Uh, people on Iceland don't like polar bears. They are pretty fierce animals when they are hungry. And they're always hungry, remember that. <laughs> and here, the year 1200, uh, we can see the ice coming back, but not until uh, mid 1600s. Uh, we come into what we call the Little Ice Age, and we uh, experienced a lot more ice, which then disappears uh, at the end of the 1800s. Uh, ice observations were made, of course, by our polar explorers. This shows uh, the ship Fram. Uh, it was an expedition organized by Fritjof Nansen, 1893 to 1896. And uh, Fritjof Nansen, he planned to reach the North Pole, but uh, the drift took him four degrees further south. So he got his skis on to try to reach North Pole, but uh, the ice pack was so rough, so he figured out they wouldn't make it. So uh, Johansson and Nansen, they skied south and reached Franz Josef Land, where they spent the winter. And uh, you see this log here, which was uh, part of the roof construction under which they spent the winter. Uh, another expedition was a Swedish balloon expedition organized by Andrea. And he had uh, two people with him, the physicist uh, Nils Strindberg and the Knut Frankel. And in 1897, they took off in a balloon, you can see here. And uh, they were using the southerly winds, but it didn't last too long. And, uh, but while they were up in the air, uh, Nils Strindberg photographed the first aerial view of the ice pack in the Arctic which you can see on this picture. And uh, they flew for three days, and then they had lost uh, hydrogen, and also icing on the balloon uh, forced them down on the ice. 
and they, they landed, as you can see up on the top there, and then they started trekking over the ice south. And they came uh, finally on the 4th of October to White Island, a place God had forgotten. And here they died uh, within two weeks, and there's a lot of debate on why they died. My theory is that uh, they froze to death. They had everything wet, and uh, suddenly you have 20 minus, and your clothes are frozen stiff on your body, and you have no chance to survive. Uh, 1922, you could read uh, the newspapers, the Arctic Ocean is warming up, icebergs are growing scarcer, and in some places the seals are finding the water too hot. All point to radical change in climate conditions and hitherto unheard of temperatures in the Arctic zone. Exploration expedition report that scarcely any ice has been met with as far north as 81 degrees and 29 minutes. Great masses of ice have been replaced by moraines of earth and stones, the report continued, while at many points well-known glaciers have entirely disappeared. This is not what we, is happening today, that you might think. It, it happened uh, and was reported by U.S. Weather Bureau 1922. And this is the actual publications. Uh, other observations of the Arctic ice was done by Amundsen with his airship Norge when he sailed from Spitsbergen across the North Pole to Alaska. And here's a picture passing the North Pole on the 12th of May, 1926. Uh, my old friend Einar Sverre Peterson was chief navigator of Scandinavian Airlines and his dream was to have civil traffic uh, over the pole, uh, and uh, he developed the navigational equipment using a gyro to navigate uh, from Scandinavia to Alaska and the Asia. And uh, in 1952, they made their first Arctic flight, delivering uh, uh, planes from Los Angeles to Scandinavia. And uh, other ice observations were made from uh, ice islands uh, that were drifting around the Arctic. And this is the American station T3. And uh, I was lucky to be taken there in 1967. And you can see a little village here on the ice. And they made a lot of recordings of the Arctic oceans. Then we have the submarines. That, uh, the first one was Nautilus uh, that went under the ice but the first to surface was Skate in March 1958. In 1987, there was a rendezvous with two American subs and a British one. But the first more systematical observations of uh, the Arctic ice was done by satellites and started 1979. And if we then compare the ice situation, the first registration, November, uh, 1979 with uh, November 2003, 24 years later, it's hard to see any difference. Uh, what is the natural case is that 60% of all the ice melts every summer. So a 60% decrease is normal. Some years it's a little bit more, some years a little bit less. But that's a fact that is often forgotten in the reporting. In 2007, it was a little bit less ice extent than normal, and it was caused on uh, global warming, of course. But the real fact was that it was unusually strong winds and currents bringing the ice, oops, uh, no, let's see, uh oh. I have to. We're soon there. Rapid repetition. There we are. Uh, well, I thought there was a pointer here, but I seem to press. Is it the middle one here? Use, use this one. Ah, use okay. On screen. Oh, I see. Okay, fine. Yeah, there it is. 
Yeah, there is. So what happened was that the ice was pushed down toward the Greenland and Canada here. And a lot of ice was pushed out of the Arctic Ocean along the Greenland uh, east coast. This year, no tourist ships could reach Greenland on the east side. <clears throat> and um, the following year, as we can see, the ice increased. And it continued to increase to four years in a row. But that is not usually reported. The diagrams usually stop at 2007. In 2000. Uh, eight, uh, the Swedish icebreaker Uden went north of Greenland and it encountered extremely big amount of ice. So the ice extent was less than it used to be, but it was thicker, it was pressed together. Uh, I made an interview uh, on a video uh, where he explained the ice problems and I sent the video to Swedish national TV which broadcast it, but they only showed the beautiful pictures of the icebreaker coming back to Spitsbergen, but they didn't show the interview. That was, of course, the essential part of it. Uh, <clears throat> 2009, uh, Alfred Wegener Institute uh, sent off uh, their airplane with the ice radar to measure the ice thickness. Uh, here it landed at the North Pole where the Russians had an ice uh, runway and they calibrated their instruments by drilling through the ice and uh, they flew over to Canada and back across again and they could report that the ice had increased in thickness one meter uh, over that year from the previous year. So here we can see how the ice increased rapidly. And uh, in 2012 uh, we had extremely little ice again but what happened was that in one month, the ice cover doubled in the Arctic uh, from September to October. And that has never happened before, that the ice increased so rapidly. Well, this curve you have seen before, which uh, shows a temperature increase from 1910 to 1940, a decrease from 40 to 77, and another increase. It's <clears throat> It was reported that we were heading into a new ice age in all the magazines and books. Uh, here we can see that the ice extent decreased starting around 1977, and then it started to increase again in 2008. So what happened here? Well, we have something called the Pacific Decadal Oscillations, PDO. And uh, what we then can see is that uh, when PDO is positive, warm water is pushed into the Arctic Basin. You can see the red arrow at the top. And when PDO is negative, no wa warm water goes into the Arctic Ocean. And this is how our friends want to show how the temperature increase has been the last 150 years. I interpret the basic data like this. We had an increase, decrease, increase, decrease, increase, decrease. And the factor behind this is the PDO being positive or negative. And also what happened was that uh, by coincidence, the first satellite observations from 79 coincided with PDO becoming positive in 77. So it's from that 30 year period we see the decline of the ice but now it's changed and it's now increasing. So what will the possible future ice conditions be? Well, we have to look at the sun. And uh, you have seen this diagram before. And uh, the 24th solar cycle is now just peaking, but at half the level of the previous solar cycle. And the next solar cycle in a level year will have its peak very, very low, on the same level as the Little Ice Age in the 1600s. And here we can see the sunspot frequency dramatically dropping from 2007. It didn't turn around uh, at the other levels that we are used to. And Professor Abdul Samatov, he presented this diagram a few years ago, showing that we're heading down to the same level as the end of the 1600s. 
And here's his updated diagram you saw earlier today, uh, which very clearly shows that we should insulate our houses and prepare for a cold future. So, hooray, we are saved, is the message from the polar bears. <laughs> <laughs>